This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If I could be honest with you, I'm genuinely bored of doing lens reviews. I think it's because the majority of these modern lenses have gotten so good. And the fact that they output such clinically pristine images, it just, it all looks the same to me. So recently I was on a mission to find a portrait lens that would give my images a different look and some character. There is this legendary vintage lens that has been on my radar for years now, and I finally pulled the trigger. It is the Helios 85 millimeter F 1.5, the real king of the swirly bokeh. This lens was first produced in the Soviet Union in the 1950s and 60s. It creates a very distinctive swirl or soap bubble bokeh effect that is more pronounced than its little brother, why well, I call it the little brother, the Helios 55 F2, which I'm sure you've heard about on the internet. This effect can be striking in portrait photography, adding a very dreamy, romantic quality to images. But for $500, I can't sit here and just outright recommend it without you knowing some of its limitations. I also paired it with the new TechArt Manual Focus 2 Autofocus Adapter. So I'll be touching on that towards the end of the video. So let's talk about the image quality coming out of the Helios 85 millimeter. The center of the image is the only part of the image that's usable in terms of sharpness. It's decently sharp, but it's not a sharp lens wide open. That right there already segues into the biggest limitation of using a lens like this, especially for portraits, is that you always have to compose the model or the person in the middle of the frame. Because if you, God forbid, use the rule of thirds, like I did sometimes when I was shooting Kayla. I mean, she's just not only just blurred, she is like distorted. It does, it looks really bad. Chin up like this, like that, yeah. So when you pick up a lens like this, guess what? You're limited in your compositions. You're gonna have to put them in the middle for the most part. And now for some good news. If you purchase this lens like I did, because you want a different look in your images, you don't want it to look like a, it was taken on a modern setup, you're getting that with this lens. You're, de you're definitely getting a more subdued image when it comes to colors and the way it just flares, just any bit of light comes in here and this thing starts to flare up like crazy. So you're definitely gonna get more dreamy images coming out of this lens. Speaking of flaring though, this is a flaring monster. Just like the Helios 55 F2, uh, the flaring can either complement your image or it can destroy it really, really fast. So when shooting backlit, the flaring, because it, it flares so much, it actually makes it hard to nail focus precisely on the face because the flaring can interfere when you, you know, using focus magnification. It's really hard to get that pinpoint focus. The pain in the ass lens to use. Oh, there we go. But also because it flares so much and the backgrounds become so washed out, it kind of decreases the effect, the soap bubble, the swirl effect in the background. Push your face out more. No, <laughs> no, you're hiding it with your hand. And that's the biggest reason to buy a lens like this. So my big, my suggestion is, from my experience with this lens, is if you want to get the best image quality possible out of this lens, and you want to, you know, get your money's worth, you want to make sure that you use the sun as your main light. And I know your model's gonna be crying like Kayla was, she was tearing up. I had her close her eyes sometimes uh, just to give her eyes a little break. I'm surprised because she has those like five inch eyelashes that like block out the sun. I'm, I always give her crap about those freaking eyelashes. And also you're gonna get maximum swirl in the background and you're not gonna get crazy flaring. So that's the, you're gonna get the best quality when using the sun. I think we all can agree that the biggest motivation to buy a lens like this is for that swirly bokeh. Go back there and look through your telescope. Tell me what color Mars is. I closed my eye for the whole <laughs> All right, but we gotta make this look cute though. You see, what, what? <laughs> All right, so. Not everyone looks through the lens. So how, uh, I used the Helios 55 F2 like six years ago. Um, I know that's becoming a thing on YouTube, right? It's a $60 lens that everyone needs to have. And you know, it is a great lens for that money to give you a different look. And you do get that swirly bokeh, but this one, 
if you thought you had swirly bokeh with that lens, this one is, it's like on steroids. Because of that extra reach and that compression and that f1.5 aperture, it, you are getting that enhanced look. But just because you have that f1.5 aperture doesn't mean that every back, that all the backgrounds are just gonna just start swirling up. Um, just like the Helios 55 F2, if you don't have um, like little highlights, right? If you don't have like a lot, like a really busy background or little highlights peeking out through leaves, you're not gonna get that swirly effect. So for example, if you have like a brick building behind someone or some just, just like a house or something, you're not gonna see that swirl effect. Just because you buy this lens doesn't mean that you are getting the swirl. You have to look for the perfect background or the right backgrounds to achieve that look. So what is it like using this lens as a manual focus lens? Well, let me tell you, it's not fun at all. It's not fun. It takes about four, diff four spins to get it from infinity to close focus. It's a very long focus throw. So don't expect to be working really fast with this lens. It's, you really have to take your time. And the depth of field is so razor thin. It's, it's really, it's not easy to manual focus this lens. Um, it almost kind of kills the experience a little bit just because I like to work faster. And when you're shooting backlit, forget it. It's so hard, even when you're using focus peaking and even with this big, big, beautiful EVF that's on the Sony A1, it's like a big 75 inch TV in there. It's still hard to lock focus. It's still hard to like get it precise using all of the tools, manual focus tools that this camera has. That leads me into what I was using to autofocus this lens. And this is the newest version of the TechArt uh, manual focus to autofocus adapter. So yes, you heard that right. This adapter will autofocus this manual focus lens. Let's see. Um, the, it, the problem is, well, for one, it's not very, it doesn't always work, okay? It doesn't always work. So sometimes it does work and work well. Like indoors, it'll work well. When you're using the, the sun as your main light and the lighting's really nice, it can work pretty good. But when you're shooting anything backlit or you have any kind of flaring in the image, it's gonna struggle and it's gonna hunt. And a lot of the times I had to override and just manual focus the lens myself. Try to stay still for a couple of them because you gotta be real precise here. One, two. In regards to this specific setup, the tech art with the Helios 85, I can't sit here and recommend you get a setup like this because the focus, because the focus throw is so long on this lens. So let's say I'm at my closest focusing distance and my model is far. It's only gonna autofocus this lens up until a certain point and then it's gonna stop. It's not gonna be able to reach her. I kind of give it a little nudge, you know, I kind of just give it a little, little turn. Get the, fo get the focus closer to the person and then it'll it'll kind of reach them. So it has like this point where, okay, it stopped, I can't go any further. You gotta help it and assist it a little bit. But again, I found it, it sometimes works, but it sometimes doesn't. And for the most part, um, I mostly shot, I almost used it just to like assist me in getting there. So I'll half press, it'll get me close to her and then I'll have to just override it and just use manual focus anyway. So I can't sit here and recommend it, but I think that this adapter will work better with the 55 Helios and other lenses as well that doesn't, maybe that don't have such a long focus throw. It is such cool technology and I'm very familiar with the, the Photo Deox one back in the day. It worked okay. Um, I like how nice and slim this one is though. It doesn't, doesn't add that much bulk. One of the biggest reasons to purchase a lens like this, especially the vintage one, because they make newer versions for Canon mount, I think, on eBay, and they're black. I think that the silver is just freaking beautiful. I, so I, I could have got the new one, but no, I want the old one. Give me the old school one that's in beautiful silver. It's not pristine at all. It's very, it's kind of dirty, but it adds character to the lens. It is, it is such a beautiful combo with a modern camera like the Sony. Um, I only wanted the silver one for this and I did pay a good amount. I paid like $500 for this lens and that is a steep price. That is why I, I didn't own this lens earlier on when I had the Helios 55 F2. Now, let me tell you about a purchase that you will absolutely not regret. 
and that is getting a website with Squarespace. If you have been looking to start a website, blog, or an online store, you need to check them out ASAP. Every entrepreneur needs a website, and with Squarespace, you don't need to have any kind of graphic design skills to start. It's so easy to use. They have 24-7 customer support. If you ever get bored of the look, you can choose from a bunch of pre-made templates and switch everything up at a click of a button. You can also start your own online store like I did where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial to make some passive income. If you want to check them out for yourself, use the coupon code Manny and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. If you have a little bit extra money and you want a different look and you want to out of a lens that you're not going to use all the time, a very, very niche lens. And it's a pain in the butt to use. It is a pain in the butt to get focused with. But when you have the right situation, you can really create some unique stuff that's going to garner questions online. Hey, what lens did you use for this? It's, it's a cool look. It's a very unique look. There's a reason why this lens is, it's like legendary in the vintage portrait lens or just vintage lens community. Uh, this is legendary for that reason. And it is like a piece of art. And, you know, even though it's already falling apart on me, this is one of those lenses I don't know if I'm ever going to get rid of. Uh, because again, I like having certain lenses on the shelf that I can pick up and I know that I can just create something a little different with, you know?